All right, so today is a, a really interesting day because I'm not gonna be playing any guitar. It's a video I've been wanting to do for a really long time, and it's all about building a guitar pedal. So, what I'm gonna do today is take you through the entire process from start to finish of how I build a guitar pedal. I chose today to make a clone of the Analog Man Sunface uh, pedal, which this is gonna be the silicon version, and I'm using a pedalpcb.com board. I have the build docs right here. And uh, I chose this because I think it's a, a pedal that's, you know, it's kind of, um, there's a wait list and it's a highly desirable pedal and it's really not that hard to build. And all the parts that you need for this, we can get from Tata Electronics. We can, you can get a pre-drilled enclosure that's powder coated and all the parts needed. Now I drill all my own enclosures and paint them. So I'm gonna take you through how I do everything from populating this circuit board, to drilling the enclosure, to the airbrushing, painting, everything that you could ever want. It's me building a guitar pedal. So here we go, let's get started. Now some of the stuff that I really highly recommend, and this is, I use this in every build, I recommend a needle nose pliers, we're gonna need some sort of wire cutter, wire stripper. These are flat edge cutters. Now these cutters will go right up against the board when we cut the extra leads. Um, I use a really tiny and small um, screwdriver. This is to adjust the nuts on all of the uh, knobs that we put on top of the potentiometers. This is a solder sucker, which is a great thing if you ever need to maybe change a part out or for troubleshooting to get rid of extra solder. I also use just a standard Phillips head screwdriver. This is a little pick that you can get at your hardware store. I like to use these for moving wiring around and get it the way I like it. If you want to get extra particular, they make these um, resistor lead bender things. I rarely use these, but I thought just in case someone wanted to see what they do. I'll show you how they work. Now I also have um, four sockets. So I have a 14 millimeter socket. This is for the nut that goes on the foot switch to tighten this when we get it into the enclosure. I have a 7 16 which is for tightening and loosening this nut on the power adapter. I have a 10 millimeter, which is for all of the pots that we use to tighten pots to the enclosure, and then a half inch, which is for input and output jacks. One couple other tools I use that I think are essential for pedal building and I didn't get into this till way late, and I wish someone would have told me, is this right here. This is a center punch. I'm gonna shoot that over there. This is a center punch. Now what this is for is going to be for when we have, we're gonna tape this piece of paper right here, and then we're gonna use a hammer and the center punch to make little dents in the enclosure for drilling. So when I go to drill, I use this little, I think it's a 330 seconds bit. I drill all the pilot holes and then using, this is a step bit, which we're gonna go through everything else in detail. I use to make the holes for all these uh, different things that go in there. So that of course is some of the tools that we're gonna be using today to build this pedal. Now, to get started, some stuff you need right away, and especially if you're a beginner. Print out the build docs, which I've done here. I have them down. Here we go. There's the part list you need. It also has a schematic here on the next page that we can kind of reference to. And then just for the wiring, but we're gonna do an easy wiring, which I'll show you. And then um, this is the cutout for when we go to drill and um, for drill the enclosure, if you don't buy one pre-drilled. So like I stated before, I like to drill and paint everything. So that's why I don't buy my stuff pre-drilled. Okay, so now for 
populating a circuit board, it's super easy. We're gonna post this video, I'm gonna show you the circuit board up on the screen, and you'll see everything on here is already marked and labeled for what it is. So what we need to do is basically, it's like a paint by numbers. You need to um, just put in what it says. So if we start here at R4, if we look at our board here, it says it's a 470 resistor. Now I'm gonna show you one thing that I think all beginners should do. I buy my stuff from Tata like this and it has 470 written right on it. I'll even put it up here, boom. You can go by that, which I'm not gonna lie to you, a lot of times I do. But for beginners, so there's never, the hardest part about building pedals I've found is like troubleshooting. When I gotta troubleshoot stuff, it's like, oh God, just throw this thing away. But what I like to do is all my resistors, I put my multimeter, bonk, right there, and I test them to make sure I just have accurate numbers in case something got mixed around or whatever. So right here, we have a 468 ohm resistor, needs 470. Now all I do is I take this resistor, and I'm gonna set this out of the way, and as you can see, I'm gonna bend the leads, just like so, and put it in there. Now there we go, we have our first resistor populated on the board. Now this is the fun part, This the populating the circuit board part, which I really like. Now some tips for populating a circuit board. It's really helpful if you go from the shortest to the tallest. Some people like to do one thing at a time where they'll populate, solder it in, you know, go to the next. My way, I've, this is the way I've always done it, is I'll put in all the resistors and the diodes and maybe the trim pots, solder them in, go to the next thing, trim all the leads. Um, for something like this where it's a pretty easy build and there's not a lot of parts to it, I will just populate everything all at once and solder it up. So. We have our first resistor in. Now what we're gonna do is move over to the trim pots. Now these little trimmers have little codes on them and they're gonna be so hard. It's gonna be so hard to get these on there. There we go, we got it. So that code, that P503, that's five zero, three more zeros on it. So it's a 50K pot. Now on our thing here, on the board it says 50K, that's the clean trimmer pot, which we're gonna put in. And then what I'll do with these is I'll bend the leads over like that so our, bot, our pot is totally mounted. Now if we go over here, same thing. It's The little code on here is gonna say P502, that's a 5K pot. So again, we'll just put that in there, that's for our, the internal bias. So there we go, we have our two trim pots in, now diodes, we're gonna talk diodes real quick. This is a reverse, a, basically it's a power protection diode. So if you happen to plug in the wrong polarity of power, it's not gonna fry your circuit, it's just gonna, the diode, which they're cheap and easy to replace. Now on this diode, it has a little gray strip on it. It's a 1N5817. That will go in the square hole here, and it aligns with the little white stripe on there, which again, we'll show. So we'll get that put in. Now, I guess the only other thing that's kind of out of the ordinary is working with capacitors. These are electrolytic capacitors. They have a short leg and a long leg. Look at that. This is a 1NF. The long leg goes in the positive where it says plus or the square hole. And you just shove that in like that. Pop, pop. There we is. So as you can see, it's pretty easy. I mean, this is the easiest part, I think, of building a pedal. We're just gonna populate the board. We're gonna get everything soldered in. Now, one thing to note, normally I would socket these transistors so I could hot swap them out if I wanted to. 
But since I already measured them and I just kind of want this to go super easy, I am just going to go like that and solder them straight to the board. So enough from me, Amory. I'm going to finish populating this thing, get it soldered up, and then we're going to move on to the next part. So there, we have our fully populated board. As you can see, there's every resistor is in, the transistors are in, and we can um, go ahead and start soldering this bad boy. All right, so for this part, we're gonna start soldering the board. Now, there are a ton of really, really great videos out there on YouTube about how to solder. So I won't go through everything, but I will show you what I do. I have, I use this, uh, I think it's called Kester 6040 solder. I have a Heiko FX888D soldering iron. Now, no one needs to. If you're just getting started out and you're only gonna build a couple pedals, you don't need anything like that soldering iron. You can go get like the cheap ones from, well, I used to say Radio Shack, but they're no longer around. So you can get them from like Amazon or whatever, and they work great. Any hobby store will have a decent little 30, 40 watt, you know, soldering iron. I build a ton of pedals and amps and everything else. So I like having the nicer soldering iron. Okay, so let's get started. Before I start doing anything, I clean my tip. Now when I say I clean my tip, this is what I'm talking about. This tip here, let's see if we can get that. Bonk, right there is super hot. So I make sure it's see how it's nice and shiny. And then I tin it a little bit, which is just putting a little bit of um, solder on it. And it makes it really nice. Then I come in here and I hit a hole, one of the holes, I warm it up a little bit and I put some solder to it. And there we go. We have one leg of a transistor nice and soldered. Okay. And then what I do is I hit every at least one lead of every component. So like these little trim pots, it's really hard to do it from so far away without blocking the camera. My like shaky hand. Um, so the trim pots, I'm hitting one lead. For these resistors, I'll hit one lead. Normally I'm not this bad guys, it's hard as hell to see and do it in reverse with the camera. It's actually kind of fun. All right, let's get this other transistor in here. Okay. Get that out of the way. And I'll show you why I'm doing this, but... Okay, there we go. What else am I missing? I can't see a damn thing. Oh yeah, these electrolytic capacitors. Okay. There we go. So I think I got everything, at least one lead. Yep. So now what I do is I'm gonna take my flat angle cutter, boop, and I cut every lead off of here. And now what I can do is when I go to hit the other holes, there's nothing in my way, and I can really get a good, um, good solder joint on them. I put my fingers over there just so they don't go flying everywhere and hit me in the face Because <laughs> I've had that happen. They go flying everywhere in the they land in the carpet And then you'll find them a week later after it digs into your foot or something. It's a real treat And with these flat cutters, it's really nice because you can just kind of glide it look them right along the board and Hit everything, okay Now there we go what I'll also do at this point is anything that doesn't look like it's seated properly in here, I will adjust it. Like, see how that resist that transistor is sitting a little funny? And it's nothing more than aesthetic to me. You know, I just like that clean look. And, you know, unless someone's going in there to look at it, you're never going to know. But it's like a thing to me, you know? I think it's a thing to a lot of us weirdos. A lot of us pedal weirdos, right? So, Okay. Now let's go ahead and fill in the rest of these holes with solder. Now, that's what I like about these clipped leads here is as you can see, 
you have a little bit of the resistor sticking out and we can just um, get a nice good solid joint on that. Okay, so right there we're done. As you can see, we have a board that's fully soldered. Every component is in there and we're good to go. Now the next thing we need to kind of work on is we'll, we will get this thing out of the way is I like to prep a few things. I like to get my, as we can see, we have our potentiometers here. See how it's got that little thing? We need to get rid of that. Boop, that's gone. I have all three of my potentiometers here. I've done it to all of them. There's our next one and we're all good to go. So, what's next in the, in the making of a guitar pedal? We have to work on the enclosure. Now this is your standard Hammond enclosure, 1590 N1. So, I'll show you what I like to do here. We'll get them uncovered, right? Toss that, now 1590 N1, 125B, same thing. I take my uh, lid and screws, bottom lid, set those aside. Now we got the top. Boom, right? Get that zoomed in feel. I'm gonna get four pieces of tape. And this is the beauty of using a pedalpcb.com board. Um, the build docs are pretty helpful. Besides just getting your parts list together, you get this really neat thing. And this is how we are going to mark and drill for the enclosure. So what I'll do is I fold, right? Cut this out and fold it. And do this on all sides. And this will just sit right on top of the enclosure. And this gives me a chance to use that center punch and hammer to make all the markings that I need to do. So see, we just write like that. And then what I'm gonna do is we're gonna actually zoom out just a little bit here. And do it here is go like that. So now we have this just taped on. So here we are. We are all taped on here. Take the center punch, which is right here. I put it on the hole of where I'm gonna go with this hammer. Now we need an LED, let's put it there. Same thing. Now, what you'll see there is I basically just scored the metal. So when I put my little drill bit in there, it's gonna catch right away and give me a really nice pilot hole that'll be nice and accurate. So, where we go from here is we're gonna take this, I have a whole drilling station, and painting station downstairs. Um, we are gonna go get this thing drilled and we're gonna get it painted. Today I'm gonna use my airbrush and I'm gonna paint this a flat red. So I have primer, shaboidal, Tamiya painted, Tamiya paints acrylic, flat red, and let's go paint this son of a gun.